Hey, South Asia Valorant players, I'm Sean Garris. It's Kusta. And Michael from Genji Valorant here with some really exciting news. We have teamed up with LG Ultra Gear and the Esports Club for Season 2 of The Gauntlet. The winner of TEC Gauntlet Season 2 will receive an exclusive one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with our Valorant team to help identify areas of improvement in their game to prepare for a higher level of gameplay. In addition to that, we're going to be reacting to some of the top plays throughout this competition. Guys, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so make sure you don't miss out on this. Good luck to everyone competing from everyone here at Gen.G Valorant. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the finals of the LG Ultra Gear TC Gauntlet uh, All-Stars event. And we are back with another day and a brand new start. And a brand, not really a brand new start, an ending to a really good storyline coming on from day number one. It is going to be an interesting matchup, that is for sure, for day number two here. Because now we're going to be watching two incredible teams going up against one another. Yesterday, we saw an intense matchup universe. It was the side of Team Bravo doing an incredible showcase from their side, being able to take down Team Alpha in one of the closest matches that we saw. And then Team Delta, they pulled off their own, uh, they pulled off their own miracle by being able to take down Team Charlie. Not as much as Team Bravo, but still, they had a tough fight, don't you think? Yeah, they had a pretty tough fight. It was really neck and neck between Alpha and Bravo, you know, until the very end. They, both of them put up, you know, a lot of, um, uh, you know, things on the plate, but it was just Team Bravo who took... Uh, the piece of the cake that was there at the very end, and they uh, made it, you know, on their own. They had it all for themselves. And even though we saw, you know, overtime come on one, the first map, and then in the second map, we saw a 13 to 10 victory, I think it was. Uh, whatever it was, it was really, really, you know, hard fought between those two teams. Whereas the second match, Delta and Charlie, actually, it was more of an easier task for Delta. Charlie, they did give them some competition, but I feel that. 13 to 8 and 13 to 9, two score lines that show the fact that Team Delta have what it takes to win this one. It, it, mm -hmm. It's a set of all, it's a set of, you know, superstars who are going to be now facing off to uh, get, you know, the majority of the 50,000 price pool. And yeah, we're going to have to see who it is that comes out on top. Both of these teams have done some pretty great things in the semifinals or, well, the first match. And now that they're facing off against each other, and I'm really excited to see who is it that's going to be coming out on top.
who gets the crown gear, and who's going to be the winner of the LGL Trigger TC Gala All Stars event powered by WWE Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant. That's what we really need to see here, ladies and gentlemen, primarily because of one thing. Both of these teams, they have a lot of potential in them. Both of these teams, they know what to expect. They know what the other team are capable of because at the end of the day, yes, it is streamers mixed in with a lot of pro players, but the pro players know what the other pro players are doing as well. But here is the most interesting factor here with the streamers added into the mix. They add a lot more flavor and a lot more dynamics to the way they play the game. And they don't really follow the book. They have their own specific set of strategies. They will sometimes throw in a little bit of spice into the broth as well. And then suddenly it's a brand new dish in a matter of seconds. And that's kind of the thing here. Both of these teams, they have their own superstars. The superstars can, can just take down their opposition with a snap of a finger. That's what really happened yesterday as well. Hydroflay came out of absolutely nowhere, absolutely just thinking people in the head with a marshal. And you got to say, that guy was incredible on that reina being able to pull off clutch after clutch round after now being able to take down his opposition without much fault and now here he is once again trying to go against the side of delta who i don't think they're going to be given any form of leeway or any form of openings towards the side of him bravo because now they're the ones who are right close they're very close to take down their opposition and so let's head on down over and when you consider the lineup here as well, ladies and gentlemen, for the side of Team Delta, the fact that they do have Bullseye, they have Bullseye, RoboTM, all of these players, they know what they can do, and they are really strong and really potent at their roles. But at the same time, when you consider the side of Team Bravo, they are much more well-rounded, I would say, going all over the side. Yeah, I would have to say so the same as well. You know, these rosters have been pretty, uh, I, 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 I don't want to say hand-picked, but they're definitely looking like it, but the way they're playing, we've got, you know, Scar God, we got Hydroflex, we got Edit, we got HVS, we got a lot of players who have uh, shown their, you know, worth in uh, the TC Gauntlet Season 2 and Season 1. Uh, Hydroflick being the ex exception because, well, he's... Yeah, uh, he's, he's a streamer here. He's a streamer here. And uh, it, it has been quite a bit of a, you know, uh, showcase of his skill as well. He's shown that he can... Uh, you know, hold himself up uh, with all of these pro players around him as well and in front of him. And he's done pretty good, you know. You never know when you can see him maybe, you know, pop into the esports scene, uh, come out of some team, you know. You never know how it's going to mm -hmm. be. I would love to see him though, but right now he's going to be playing in this All-Stars event and he is uh, one of the players to look out for. Apart from who I believe is going to be RoboTM, who actually had a pretty great showing, you know, in the previous match because... Uh, he, I remember he played the Sky, he played the Sage, I believe, and he, he was just really good. Uh, you know, he was tapping away heads, he had the yep. skill uh, to, you know, have the composure, composure to play against these pro players. I know it's all a bit of fun and games, but it still shows that the man's got what it takes to be at the top. So both of these content creators uh, or slash streamers have been uh, really good in showcasing yep. their skill and they need to do it today as well because... Uh, you know, as much as we know that the pro players can do it to the best of your abilities, sometimes you just need somebody else to stop, step in. Yesterday, it was both of these players, and today, I hope that they do it again. And we're going to see a lot of different, you know, strategies, maybe a lot of different compositions in terms of where exactly we're going to see these players play. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a difference. Maybe. thing that I really want to see is actually Rio go, uh, going up against Edit here. The Sova play is something that we highlight all the time, and there's a reason for that. Sova is one of the main characters that we always look to to be the one to initiate a lot of the plays. We know how potent Rio can be on that Sova. He's incredible when it comes down to his 100 streaming, but so is the side of Edit. Edit is known for his reverse uh, counter, uh, counter ultimate plays. The thing is that his 100 Fury is normally used to counteract the opposition, and he has a really good sense of where his opposition likes to play whenever they pull out their 100 Fury. Normally, we always see Edit being able to pull off at the bare minimum of two kills with 100 Fury if he has a certain sense of where the enemies can be holding on towards. And the other thing about Edit is that his shot dart lineups, they are not rocket science based lineup sometimes we see lineups heading down from the side of a long on haven on towards the side of the c site or default that is something that does not happen as often and a very few players can pull that off but with edit 
he relies a lot more on consistent lineups playing close to his team. While with Rio, he relies a lot more on complexity of his lineups. He can throw lineups from B to A, from C to B. He has a lot to work with on his side. So now we're looking at the proficiencies of the Sova a lot more because I personally do believe that both of these teams, they rely on their Sovas heavily. They are much more information-based teams where the side of Team Bravo, they're not as aggressive. They like to play a little bit slower. And so is the size of Team Delta. They rely on information to make their plays happen. And in this situation, I really want to see who's going to be winning out here. Will it be the side of Team Bravo or Team Delta, knowing that they have similar play styles? Universe, what do you think? Do you think that we're going to be seeing a dynamic shift in these two teams because of the way that, that their Sovas plays and the way they rely on information? As we head on down over to the map video screen, because I personally do believe that the maps are where it's all at. Both of these teams are extremely good, but when they head on over into split, where information is very scarce, and you won't really have a lot of things that can gain information for you when it comes down to the terms of agent, because Sova's not that good. Sky is good, but she has been nerfed a little bit, so it's a lot more difficult to get a lot of value out of her. It is difficult to get value if you're playing by yourself, right? Sky yeah. is an agent that it relies upon team building. And if you have a team around you that, you know, is going to be taking care of, you know, getting the entry frags on the backs of the flashes or the, you know, informational uh, hound being sent in. However it is, Sky is now more of a team player than being solo, right? Before yeah. she could flash in and get her weapon into her hand within a, with less than a quarter of a second. And now she's going to have to wait for just a little bit more. And that, that causes a little, you know, uh, a dis disruption in the way that she plays by herself. But still, not that bad. Sky is definitely one of the go-to agents on any map at this point. And, you know, we see a lot of pro players pick her up. And we see a lot of uh, maps being played with Sky. We see Haven being played with Sky. We see Ascent with Sky. But pretty much every single map is available for Sky to play on. The only difference is there's no pinpoint location uh you know, for Sky, it's a Sova thing to have, you know, literally scan them through across the wall, spray them down with an Odin or whatever it is that you want. And you said it, you know, Split is definitely not a place where you would see a Sova come in. Uh, Sky, definitely a breach. Maybe if, you know, anybody's feeling up to it, I don't know uh, if any of the content creators want to go for it, either Hydro Flick or Robo. Uh, yeah. we, can, we can see it happening, but... Split is more certainly going to be more of a uh, duelist uh, dependent match, I feel. A raise uh, should be selected, I feel, for either both of these teams, if not at least for one, because the explosive uh, properties of raise are just going to make it a little bit more easier to clear corners. And not to forget that, you know, the boom bot is also good at doing that and giving damage at the same time, even though the boom bot has been nerfed as well. So split, definitely a map where information, like you said, is scarce, but can be may yeah. do it if you have a sky but i still feel that it's this so is difficult. a more yeah it, i still feel this is a more duelist based map and i think sentinel at some point because of how they can lock down the side by themselves as well so yeah but haven is going to be a different story yep. big map wide open sova probably the most useful agent over there apart from the jet i feel and it's yeah it, it's it's a it's a very um combination of maps ascend being the last one which I'm not quite sure if we're going to see. We might as well, but it, it all depends on... If there's any team that picks up the first map, I think they're going to have the upper hand in second. I highly doubt that it's going to be a three-map case in this match, but whoever dominates the first map is definitely going to get the second one as well. The main thing that I'd like to highlight here in particular is that Team Bravo, them being on the map of Haven, it's kind of well known. They have a much more control-based play style. That is a map where they're known to be really potent in. And that is a map where they pulled off an incredible comeback as well against Team Alpha on the previous day. So Team Delta picking up map number one as split was really smart for them because now they should be able to get a strong lead right off the get-go because split is a map where the side of players like Cactus, Bullseye, they're known to be an absolute dominant force on. And the main thing is, we know for a fact that Cactus as a player, he relies a lot on momentum. If that guy is able to get a lot of momentum right at the get-go on a map, he can completely tear you down throughout the entire set. 
But when you consider the map of Split, Cactus is really strong on this map. We have seen the strongest performance happen on this map in particular. And the fact that they picked it up right off the get-go makes sure they, sh they should be able to go in for a strong start here. But at the same time, the strong start will be quite difficult because the way that Team Bravo play, it's a lot more of a consistent nature. They like to play it a lot more slower. Yes, it's same for the side of Delta, but they are much more aggressive and a lot more random and rambunctious in the way they do a lot of their pushes. It's not really as control-focused and not really as... Stay as stable as the side of Team uh, Bravo. And this is the main thing that I have a problem with. Will Team Bravo's control based play style really help them on split? Or will the fast, rushful nature of the side of Team Delta be the thing that gets them the win here? Because split is a map where chaos reigns supreme. Personally, whenever I play split, universe, you know what happens. This is a map where you lose out gunfights that you have no business losing. Sometimes you get shot in the back, sometimes you get shot through a wall. And then you just get five band rush through the side of B main, and you're a cypher just sitting there being like, hmm, guess I'll die. My camera's gone, my traps are dead, and I'm just chilling here on the side being like, what should I do exactly? That could just happen. We don't really know. That's the thing. When you add these streamers into the mix, a lot of the strategies that we normally know and think of, it's going to get thrown out of the window. And now... How, what kind of agent pickups are you expecting here? We know for a fact that the initiators are primarily going to be the Breach and the Sky, or no initiator entirely, maybe going in for a double Sentinel composition. I want your thoughts, Universe. Do you think we're going to be seeing much more of a double Sentinel lineup, or are we going to be seeing a double initiator possibly taking over here as well? I think that this is probably going to be more controller controller based. I think it should be controller based. Uh, you know, but I would love to see some. Uh, crazy outplays coming, you know, they just uh, get maybe, I don't know, get two Sentinels, throw in a Cypher and a Killjoy, experiment your way. You know, these are the types of matches where even the pro players, they can choose to do something different, right? Uh, we saw that, you know, it was uh, Blackhawk, I remember, who played Reyna, who's not really used to that agent, but he yeah. had a tough time doing that. And, you know, it was a really difficult match for him when he was playing on Team Alpha. But hey, it uh, you know it, this is where you try to do something different. Split uh, is a map which has a, a lot of different things to consider. It's really compact. It's uh, vertical. Uh, sometimes it's very you know horizontal. It just it's it's a little it's a little all over the place. You got long range fights. You even got short range fights. The judge is a great weapon here, but at even sometimes it isn't right. So we're gonna have to see how exactly it all turns out. Whether or not we're gonna see Hydra flick on that raise. Or whether we're going to see RoboTM pick up Arena, or are we going to see him on the Sage? Uh, is it going to be Cactus on the Jet this time, or is he going to yep. try to go for something else? It's it's all for us to see, as we are going to be seeing uh, the match start up in just about a few seconds now, ladies and gentlemen. All the players are stacked up in the lobby, and we're going to have everybody start off with this match as soon as possible. But I just want to ask you, Aggressive, like, I would love to see a Viper you know, maybe oh, yeah. a Viper and a maybe Brimstone. I'm not quite sure. Maybe Omen is going to be probably a pick they go for. Mm -hmm. But I think that Brimstone is a really potent pick on Split just because of his, uh, you know, ability to get, uh, you know, his smokes are really useful. Three smokes right off, off the bat. He can place it anywhere, anywhere, unlike Viper who has just like a one-time placement of a wall. But not to forget, his ultimate is what creates a lot of space and a lot of damage as well. You know, and I think that it's really useful on split, particularly because it covers a lot of ground and it allows you to kill people. Well, for obvious reasons, and you can even have lineups with this Molotov, right? No matter where it is. So it takes a little time to, you know, fall down from the heavens above if you launch a trade up in the sky. But yeah, it is, uh, uh, you know, Brimstone could be a potent pick, I believe, in not just any play, but uh, not just in pro play, but in any play as well. Yeah, that is true. Brimstone allows you to be a lot more tactically sound because of the smokes that he does have. But hey, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to speculate for long because the agent selection is ready. The teams are picking up their agents. So let's head on down over there and see exactly what kind of agents they're going to be showcasing to us on the map of Split. And hey, it's going to be Scargot going in for that Astra. We kind of expected this, but HPS opting going for an Astra as well. I expected much more of an Omen pickup from the side of Team Delta. This could be an interesting one here, Universe, especially with the Breach being onto the side of Hoax. I do think that we're going to be going in for some spicy initiator gameplay. 
Yeah, it might just be the case, but there's uh, no initiator yet selected. Edit is probably going to go for Sky. I think. Should believe Sky. Yeah, he should be playing the Sky. As we've got Bullseye already locked in the race, so we've got explosivities on both places. Hydroflix locked it in as well, and something that I've been waiting to see since yesterday has finally come into place. We've got Knight Rider on the jet, so it's going to be the same duelist on both sides, given that Cactus is going to lock it in. Oh, Edit is actually going for a Killjoy, so there's going to be no Initiator. It's rather going to be a Sage that Robo TM is going to go for. Much more okay, reliably... Much more reliably compliant agent, I believe, Sage, your in terms of, you know, having control over basically anything and everything. You know, it's a simple agent to play, but at the same time, it's an agent that requires a lot of, you know, time to be alive. You need to be alive if you're going to help your teammates. And uh, it, it, uh, it's a varied composition. Uh, there is a Killjoy on both ends. There is a Raze and a Jet on both ends. But there's also a Killjoy. I mean, there is a, there is a Initiator difference on both ends. There's no Initiator on one side. We have a Breach on the other. Knight Rider is going to make good use of that. Hydra Flick is going to make... Uh, sorry, not Knight Rider. Uh, forgive me. Uh, yeah, Knight Rider is going to make good use of that. Hydra Flick is going to make good use of that. Both of the duelists are going to have fun with Hoax, I, I believe. And yeah, yeah it That's is going to be a little interesting to see how exactly Team uh, Charlie... Sorry, Team Delta are going to be... You know, aggressing against this because with a breach in hand, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out for them. It's going to be a difficult one for sure if you're right off the get there, first personally, because um, it's a little bit more difficult, I would say, to get use out of a breach unless you have a really strong team dynamic. And if your breach player is not very vocal, you're going to have even more problems trying to execute the play together. That's one of the primary things that I always talk about whenever we see a breach on the map. Is your breach very vocal? Is he the one telling you to go in for plays and setting you up? If he's not, you're going to have a pretty rough time trying to go in for a lot of these different executions. But you can already see, the person so start is not the best that it could be. Cactus goes in for a couple of pop shots with that Sheriff. It's bad versus turret, and in this situation, man is going to be able to survive with 94 HP. Normally, if you try to kill a turret even with a Sheriff, you get tagged down to how much HP? Like 74? That's the usual. Yeah. But hey, you gotta jiggle the turret sometimes, man. Just like yesterday, Scar was jiggling his dog around the corner. Oh, Knight Rider goes in through. Elbow, he might just find the kill and he will. Cactus finds Rio. And that's a little bit of a uh, situation that is going both ways, but Knight Rider and Scar got pulled back into theirs. Knight Rider gets another. He's going for the fourth. And here comes the flash from Oaks. And a jumping HVS is going to do nothing but get eaten up as the blinding already has begun in the very first round. And I love it. Yeah, he just got blinded by the light and Hoax. He's always going to be there to make sure he forces the enemy team to buy a couple of sunglasses right after this game. Whenever I do see a breach, it's always a sad story in my eyes. And yeah, my, my monitor is always pretty close to my face whenever I'm playing the game. So whenever I play against a breach, I'm... Very, I'm very sure to like have a pretty safe distance from my border. I'm really hoping that HBS is the same boat here because Holtz is one of those players. I've seen him play the breach multiple times when he was streaming. This guy can consistently get a lot of his flashes. So we know for a fact that he will be an absolute menace against the side of Team Delta here. But Team Bravo, right off the get-go, Knight Rider, he's going to be able to open things up a little bit dangerous. He's going to be the last two players standing. He finally gets taken out by Cactus on that trade. But on towards the backside, it's going to be Rio and Scaragot getting two pieces of their own. And Cactus, I think he's happy. He's just got a free Phantom for himself. He just needs to chill. He doesn't need to overaggress at all. But oh no. Scarlet's gonna be the one to take him out. And he gets a free upgrade to Phantom. Yep. Cactus, although he was good enough to get one, that Phantom wasn't gonna stick on him for too long. The hunt was coming in, so he had to give it up. And now he doesn't need to worry because he can afford a Phantom as he has. And it's gonna be the first buy coming in for the side of Team Delta, as we are gonna be seeing how exactly this bonus round is gonna work out. Usually on split, you know, I see that the bonus rounds 
uh, sorry, the round before the bonus rounds, the eco, usually have a lot of difference making you know, potential because of the fact that you can... Shotguns are really potentially damaging on this map. But we're gonna see how this uh, bonus round works out. Knight Rider eats a lot of damage from his own teammates' grenade, but Hydroflick takes care of the player on site, so he saves Knight Rider from getting any extra damage in case he did, as the side has already been taken, and they've already got the plan going down as well. Team Bravo have got man advantage, they've got ground advantage, they have pretty much everything as a retake is gonna come in now. Yeah, this is just not gonna be a good position! And just already at the start, finished. It's gonna be Cactus and Bulls are getting two kills of their own, they're looking for a couple of more, they're just not gonna be able to find it, not just yet. Bulls is right around the corner going for the first initial kill! He's gonna be the first kill one to get taken out at Bullseye! Satchel is gonna be the one to take down Hydroflag and Bullseye with the last kill as well, with Cactus being the one who gets traded out. 0 and 2 on the scorecards now down to a 1 and 2 here, ladies and gentlemen. And Team Delta, they get the first round on the board here in a very convincing fashion. The execution was clean, the retake was perfect as well. They played it slow, they played it smart, and waited for the side of Team Bravo to make the mistakes. Scargod being in an exact same position as always kind of costed him there. Yeah, that's kind of cost him. Now, although the round has gone over, you know, they got the plan and they got a couple of kills as well. So, bonus round that, well, pretty well executed. And you can see that the reinvestment has come in from the side of Team Delta. And two of them have had to, uh, you know, get down to Spectres. So, still a pretty good uh, chance for Bravo to continue on their rampage. Which they are doing towards mid. Cactus! Oh, no! One Knight Rider and him are just crossers apart. Both of them spot each other again. Cactus eats a lot of the bullets and he's down to 53 Spike HP. Down, mid. Robo comes on from B Heavens to get something for Team Delta. As he finds Scar God. And he's oh, gonna no. eat a bullet in the head from Rio's Vandal. As Hydra Flick trying to find some success towards B. They want to do this B split, but they're holding on because they know that there's a lot of things that they still haven't taken into account. They don't know who is playing where. They might have an idea that there's probably one player or maybe two on to B. They know there's one on to B heaven. They're just waiting for Obscuring the side of vision. Delta to make these mistakes. As you they all group run. up towards B main because the Kildare ultimate is going to go down. HVS inside the smoke could be a little bit of a menace. If he gets the right positioning and the right timing, he could potentially take out at least three. He gets one, he gets two. And he's nice. done his job. Well, he's under on the corner. Get another, left. and that's Spike round down done for B. the side of Team Bravo. Yeah, that's how you do it. Some nice play and risky is just so good at HBS. He sets it all up for his teammates. And with that, that's just another round on the board, ladies and gentlemen. For the side of Team Delta, Cactus does his own friendship dance on one of the players, and he's going to be able to finish everything off in style. 2-2 two and two on the scorecards here, ladies and gentlemen. And a really strong start for the side of Team Delta. I personally believe that, hey, Team Bravo, they won out on the pistol. They won out on the anti eagle as well in very quick succession. I thought that this would have been a one-sided affair, but just as soon as the gun runs came on down through, Team Delta, they completely switched up their dynamics. They were able to play for trades and aim it risky, but the risks are done so beautifully as well that... No one from the side of Team Delta, from the side of Team Bravo, sorry, even expected it. Like, who, who, will you ever expect a person to sit in the corner of B-Main behind that metal box when there's a kill there log now trying to force you off? Like, HBS, you're an absolute bad luck. Yeah. Most times you just ignore it, but HBS, he made them pay attention to him. And he got two kills on the back of it, so good round from him. As now there is an eco for the side of Team Bravo, and they've already lost a player. Wait, wait, what? How the hell wait. did Nightbird get here? Um, uh, did he just Ow. walk it? I thought he What? I, I have no clue how did that man. After this, where the hell did Nightbird even get from? I have absolutely no Sorry, idea. Yeah, I think we'll go we'll down, but I, I just, I, I want to have a look at the map. Look at, I, yeah, no idea where he crawled in from. There is no way he could have come in from B Heaven. There was no way he could. Wait, did he? No, come I from think B I know. Heaven? Yeah, no, 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 no. He actually came from B Heaven. He went into the B side, walked into spawn, probably missed on HBS entirely. Oh, HBS had no goddamn idea. Nitro just walked into Heaven. Yeah, that does not happen every single day. Yeah, but a little bit of a comical moment that we just missed out on, I guess, ladies and gentlemen. You guys can tell us in the chat if we missed out on that and if my analysis was correct or not. 
more so. We've got Bullseye rushing in, and okay, he's caught off guard. Oh my god, Rio. Perfectly played. He waited, he waited, and he waited. And he got the kill, but he got taken down as well. Knight Rider gonna be trading off on the other side of the map for that. HVS, yet again to his usual, playing in smoke tactics. This time it's not gonna work out. Hydra Flick takes him down, and now it's just edit and cactus left to do it in a 2v4 which looks highly unlikely because that is the minute he walks out he's got scar got waiting for him he's gonna take him out not cactus 1v4 nothing much i expect for him to do over here unless probably he gets two kills which could be one over here no he dashes away there's nothing he can do scar god gets the second of the round and it is another round for team bravo and both of these teams i would i'd expect nothing less both of them are going Back and forth with each other, we got a lot of gunfire that looks to be trading off equally, and the scoreboard is just resonating that, so yeah, I, I'm excited, and I have absolutely no idea who's going to win, and that's exactly how I want it to be. I'm pretty much expecting this to go down to three maps, or if it doesn't go down to three maps, both of the maps are going to be really close. Map number one, both of these teams, they know what to expect from one another, and they know how to play against one another, but the thing is, Universe, if we're getting something, there's a breach on the side of Team Delta. Sorry, so it's on the side of Team Bravo. And Team Delta, they're completely relying on just two Sentinels to hold down the side lines. Yes, they're on their defensive side. That's their stronger side. But what's going to happen to them when they go on their own attacking side here? They need to take this down to at the bare minimum of an 8 and 4 scoreline if they want to have a strong chance of winning this one out when it comes down to their own attacking side. They need to start here. They lost out on three rounds. It's completely fine. But you need to make the difference right here and right now when your Sentinels are as potent. Actus is going to go for one kill. Gets immediately traded out by Scar and now holds. He pulls off an Another one, but HBS, this guy's just ratted about quarters like it's nobody's business. He's one gonna be able to take remaining. down two players, and honestly, HBS, this guy is something else. You are highlighting this player to be an incredible Astro player, and I can already see why. Yeah. Rio, 1v3. He's getting baited out by Bullseye because there's somebody else we haven't waiting what? for. Okay, Rio, that, 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 that's not allowed. That, especially with a Vandal, no. Nah. How uh, he just jumped and jumped and okay. He's the Easter Bunny man. Okay. He wanted to give him an egg. But Easter no Bunny, he's on a bloody trampoline and he got that. <laughs> yeah, truly. Like sometimes if you're this good at bunny hopping, what do you have to worry about? You just jump around, hop around, you see a player, you just kill him. Robo probably got scared out of his old life. He was like, oh my god, there's a bouncing killjoy on my face. And hey, Rio, he got the kill. He got another one for the team. Gonna eco damage, I would say, long run. But at the same time, when you look at what's happening on terms of the here. ultimates here, it's gonna be dangerous. Oh. Uh, cactus, <laughs> but his Phoenix just got toyed with. His Phoenix actually got toyed with, and that guy just paid the ultimate price for him. Yeah, Robo getting a lot of pressure on him. Grenades coming in, not gonna damage anybody. Hydra Flick, he's trying to put everything he can into this B heaven side yet again and Robo's just waiting for some sound cues so he can throw in that slow orb here comes the flash they're running in the cavalry has arrived B heaven being contested but still a little cautiously he's giving away sound cues because I think they want to fake this out you can see that there's three players already here and then probably gonna hear this killjoy utility from a little afar Rio and Knight Rider as well as Scar God. All three of them here. They've been spotted out. And Knight Rider, he misses a shot. And here comes the ultimate. Hydro Flick ready with his showstopper. He's gonna look to get the kills, what? but he's looking in the wrong direction. He didn't expect anybody to be there because he saw the Boomba coming from the left, from the right, sorry. But Scar God is gonna make sure that it, Hydro Flick's death did not go down in vain. He's got the 4v2 situation for his team. And now with the revive available, Robo's gonna go for it. But he doesn't know that Hope is on the other side of it. And he's just gonna spray down Bullseye as soon as he's revived. And the revive has gone to complete and utter no use. Bravo. I've done a great job of securing this round. A fake being sold towards B Heaven. And Scar God in the back of it has gotten the A side cleared off. As they've got the plant now. And a definite round number four for Team Bravo. Yeah, it's just about clean up GG now. One by one, they're gonna go in for a swing. Maybe Robo's gonna be going for one! 
steps at the very last second, and Rio's gonna be the one who commits to the spray and takes him out. That's gonna be a little bit heartbreaking, but at the same time, hey, HBS, he's able to save out on one gun, and that one gun can be really helpful. Everyone else can go in for proper buys. They can possibly force out another round when it comes down to the terms of economy, but one of them need to buy a half shield and a specter at this stage, and basically Robo, he needs his entire utility to do this. They all do have buys, but it's not strong. It's very scrappy. They need to work something out here if they want to try and win out on this engagement. But I do believe they're not up here going for a force buy. They're going for a full-on save with a couple of sheriffs and light on. Yeah, but we can see that HVS is trying to play on the hero Phantom. And that could be a little bit of a problem for uh, Team Bravo. Not quite sure, but I think they should be okay. They should be okay with this. HVS. Oh my god, contact. not again. Knight Rider completely denies him. Not a single bullet left his chamber as he just takes him out of existence. Bullseye looking in the right direction. Low HP, doesn't even matter. Got the jump on Rio. Did not even expect that. Now Robo. Oh no, the smoke goes up the most on the perk. Wait, wait, oh, wait. He died hurt. to the blast shot? Yeah, he died. Yeah, he died to the aftershock. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, that's gonna hurt, man. The aftershock kill as well. Hey, people were saying that Breach got nerfed when they changed his aftershock. Look at that. You yeah, cannot do that before. Nerf. Breach actually got buffed. He he can take down Killjoy's ultimate. He can take down Killjoy's all of Killjoy's utilities, and pretty much do anything and everything with this aftershock at this point. It's like you don't even need a Sova's Hunter Fury or you yep. know Brimstone's Orbital Strike or even the Molotov. You just have a Breach in your team, and you always have a counter for a Killjoy. Unless the Killjoy places it uh, ultimate at a place where you can take it down. Cactus. Sound one. Got three more to go. Dashes in as a fake. Hoax is not being sold by it. He can see through exactly what Cactus tried. And he knows what's happening. Waiting to spray him down as soon as the smoke goes away. Now Cactus trying to run away for his life. Night Rider hears it. And he's going to take him down. He knows exactly what's happening. And... Uh, Round number five, as Team Bravo, they are getting control one round after the other. But the thing about this is, as much as they try it out aggressive, it's, you know, Team Delta somehow have a way of finding things back, don't they? Like, we've seen this. It went down three rounds. They got back three rounds. It went four to four. And now it's five to four. And I, I don't know why. I just believe it's going to be five to five now. It just yeah. happened here, especially with the Operator being in the hands of Cactus. Cactus could be the only one to shut down Knight Rider. Knight Rider is such a menace on that Operator, especially on the attacking side of Split. The one thing is that Split is a map where attacking side and Operators are extremely weak. They don't get a lot of value out of it because everything's close corners. It's really hard to find a proper engagement at longer ranges. With that Operator, and there's a high chance you may just get shot out and get killed immediately. But Knight Rider, he's making things work. He can be the deciding factor that gets them the round here and gets them the sixth on the board for the side of Team Bravo. You should and this run. is the very important sixth. If they're able to find the sixth here, they guarantee themselves that seventh round because at that stage, everyone's going to be opting to go in for a force buy. They need to try and find something out here. Robo DM to win around the corner. Someone's going to go take out Scar God. That's going to hurt a lot. The attacker started locked down. Someone's going to be able to find out Edit though. Edit's going to be going for one kill at the bare minimum. He's going to be surviving, but the two bodies, Knight Rider and Scar God. They're just ready. They're gonna be hunting everyone down. Right, right, right around the corner. Cactus with the flick is gonna be good for one kill. But his buddy's gonna be there to get the revenge one instead. Scargod with a 4k, Knight Rider with a 1k. And with that, it's the 4 and 6 scoreline, just as I stated before. Whenever you think about Knight Rider and his operator on the attacking side of Split, he's the very he is one of the very few people that can actually make that operator work. Everyone else, it's just a lot more difficult. Yeah, that is true. Knight Rider is, you know, one of the best operators that we've seen around. And he, he's had a pretty good impact. And now that they've put up number six on the board, they're going to have a little bit of an easier time running in. Knight Rider this time around, he does not need the operator. He just needs to dash in with the rifle. And look at this man. Edit though, somehow eats a lot of bullets. Oh, poor guy indeed robo gonna find one trade and he's gonna try and pick up the phantom as he goes in from the flanks to get something Spike not gonna be easy he heals himself up hvs spots out scar god hoax is ready with the flat throws it in but what he doesn't know 
is that Night Rider is already on the back of HGS and the flash is not needed. There it is, a third kill for Night Rider of the round. Hoax goes in for his second, and it is a beautiful round Last yet round again the from the side of Team Delta. Uh, sorry, Team Bravo, as they look like to be in control pretty much, and this half could end up 8-4 to four now, Aggressive. And, uh, like, I don't know how I feel about this, especially considering the fact that Team Delta, they have a double sentinel base composition, and they're the ones on the loss here. If they can take it down to a 7-5 and five score line, things are going to be looking up for them. But that 7-5 and five score line, I don't What's think it's going to happen. But at the same time, um, do you see what I see? Just press tab, universe. You're going to see it immediately. Yep, I know exactly what you mean. Oh, no. On split? If it was Haven, I can't understand it. Oh, look at that move button. What is happening? I... I mean, yeah, pretty much what you would expect, right? I mean, it, it's kills going back and forth. You have a lot of... Uh, okay, Cactus! Before I could say anything, he just made Knight Rider sit down. Or lie down, rather. Because that's what he's doing right now. Nothing more he can do for the rest of the round. And HVS is just going to spray down Hoax. Hoax, you know that that Nebula isn't really... Impenetrable, my friend, and it looks like it's gonna be a 7 you to 5 half. It. They make me eat up my words over here, Team Delta, but I'm actually happy with it because I want this to be more competitive. And uh, them doing this is only getting it more competitive. Rio in heavens is gonna face off Cactus any second, misses his shot. And now, Bobo across the corner is actually gonna get the jump onto Rio. And now it's Cargod left all alone to do it against five members where he's walking the one and he's gonna give away a flawless round to the side of team delta and we are going nowhere a seven to five is a respectable score for both of these sides to be honest that was a really strong round coming in down through from the side of team delta that first initial kill on knight rider was just so crucial but knight rider i thought you would expect it Normally, you never want to crouch on that specific angle. If you want to hold that angle, you should never crouch because your shoulder will always show up first because you have much more of the peaker's disadvantage. Normally, when you peak, there's an angle advantage that you always need to hold. Yes, he was holding further away from the wall, but the person holding closer to the wall from an elevated angle can see you first because of the right-hand side in models. And in this situation... His left side was completely open, and I know for a fact that Knight Rider didn't even spot out Cactus when he was trying to take a shot there. That's gonna hurt them here just a little bit, because they wanted that alien force score line really badly, because yes, their defensive side is just as strong, if not even stronger because of the beach, but it's not always gonna be working out in their favor. Hope's going in for full utility, and Bullseye just doesn't care. He's running forward, and he's gonna mow down a couple of people here if he can get his cars down properly. He's gonna be Knight Rider holding, trying to hold things down. He's just not gonna be able to find his car. That's gonna be good for one kill. Bullseye and Edit's gonna be able to shut down two simultaneously on their own accord. The B side is empty, the plant's gonna be going on down, and Bullseye is going to be able to upgrade himself with HBS getting a kill down under Rio. Hope he's going to go for one. High deflect will back up. He will shut down another. And with that, it's a two versus situation already here, Universe. The plan is down, but there's no utility left in Hoax. Oh no, Hoax, he still has one more flash to work with. Come on, go in for it. High deflect is going to get taken down. Hoax should know exactly where Edit's going to be holding here. They have a flash, they have a grenade, they know exactly where he is. But Edit, he's in such a deep kill. He should be able to get down one, but two HP and a dream. He doesn't know where to go. Does he look left? Does he look right? Hoax is gonna be the one to jump oh. up and just shut him down and slap him in the face with a classic. Get off my back. And that is gonna be a 5 and 8 score like ladies and gentlemen. For the side of Team Brown 1, just as Breed said, get off my back, Team Delta. I'm the king. That was a really chaotic round. If Hydro Flick hadn't gotten those kills from heaven, it would have been really difficult. He was the hero of that round, but it was Hoax to clean it all up. Even this tag down that Hydroflake gave Edit, if it wasn't down to 2 HP, I really feel like uh, Edit would have won that against Hoax. And one more bullet would have, you know, sufficed. But yeah, it was pretty good. If he yeah. just hit the head, dude, like that was a route for you. I mean, he did that. jump. Hoax literally jumped on him. So I don't really <laughs> expect him to place it on the head. But he did give him damage. So good enough, I feel. But just not for this run as Bravo. They are gonna have the advantage of weapons, but it looks like the force has come in.
so there's gonna be no tactical uh, no, warfare advantage as such as the bullseye running in giving out his uh, position towards b heaven Slide hopes down, actually mid. finds robo it is a force fight yes that's exactly what we're looking at hopes is gonna take down three oh God, hopes, make stop. that a fourth hopes it doesn't even matter that they've got specters all he needs is a ghost and he just taps heads back and forth and now edits left all to do it for himself and he's going back towards b heaven where he's got knight brother waiting for him he's swinging out as well there goes the turret as well headed wins that fight but down to 37 hp he goes now he's got yeah he's got everybody coming in okay edit he's taking out lives but he's not gonna be able to do anything more Rio shuts him down. It's a little costly, but they're gonna have to suffice with it. You know, I don't really know why they went on and gave him those 1v1s. They know how good edit is. And you always, against the players like that, are gonna have to get a double up, even though it's around where he cannot win. Because if they make you cost, for, if they make you buy into it again in the next round, then you know that this is a player that, you know, is gonna probably cause a little bit of a dent in the economical situation. And as he has, you can see that there's two players who will not really have money going into the next round if they die out. Which is Hydra and Knight Rider. Both the duelists on top of that as well. So they're going to have to play this round a little bit more carefully. Oh, and look at that. Hydra God already damn. lost his life. Scar got losing his as well. And just like that, a Thrifty looking like in the works for this side, ladies and gentlemen. Hoax has to be the survivor. Hoax has to be the savior. But Cactus is not going to allow him to do so. And just like that, a 5v2 comes up. Rio is going to give away his head as well. Cactus takes him down. And a flawless Thrifty coming in if Knight Rider does not have to say anything about it. This is a difficult one. And honestly, Universe, once again, it feels like the side of Team Bravo just yeah. dropped the ball instantly. HBS, he catches on the Knight Rider and his own shenanigans. Slaps him in the forehead with a beautiful shot. And a flawless Thrifty. That is not something that happens a lot of the times here, Universe. And this is the first time we're seeing this in this entire All Stars event. So, in a way, it's going to be an interesting one. It feels like side of Team Delta, they're actually catching up to what bravo are trying to employ in a lot of their different avenues they like to go in for 1v1 engagements let's shut them down piece by piece by playing it slow and waiting for them to be the ones to go in for pushes and it's kind of weird because normally we would always see the side of team bravo being the ones to play it a lot more slow or play it a lot more discipline but now the roles have swapped over it is now bravo opting to go in for a lot of pushes on the map of split it's kind of questionable here, Universe, because on Split, you don't really want to go in for super aggressive pushes. You get a little bit of information on one side of the map, and you stick it down on the other side. You try to hold mid, you try to hold B. A side can be retaken very easily in comparison to any of the other side lines. So, they're doing exactly that. This is a fast stack down towards that B side. That's Scarbot's gonna be good for two kills. All of you with that spray down, but Robo's gonna be able to take down Knight Rider. Scarbot's all my is lonesome. He's gonna be able to take down his third. Come on, take down your fourth. And it's right around the corner. Swing it in. But Edit with the headshot's gonna be the one to take down Knight Rider. And instead, hopes he does have a gun in his hand. It is gonna get picked up. He doesn't know. But Edit's gonna be good for another one. And now it's all up to Hydroflick to try and close this one out. Hydroflick versus Robo. Who's the better streamer in this situation? Who's the better player? We don't know just yet, but the board that should be good, but we're almost just not going to be able to find it. He has the gun from Wish.com, while Hydra's going to be the one with one from Amazon. Look at that, that's 6 and 10 on the scorecards already, and it feels like defensive side is just really strong here. Yeah, you know, you love playing defense on split, and if you've got an advantage in the attacking half before you come onto the defensive side, it just is the cherry on top of the cake, right? So... They're going to have fun. They're going to have a little bit more of a comfortable time. Although that Twifty came in, they were quick to respond, Team Bravo. And they've put up the round number 10. So they're just three away from settling down this first map. And which has been a little bit of a competitive first half. But the second half is looking a little bit more one-sided at least so far. Rio, he looks in the direction where these players are flying in from. Knight Rider, he gets covered up by the opponent smoke. Okay, Knight Rider one takes dash. out one. He needs to dash away. He sees where Cactus is getting out, but it doesn't matter. He's doing oh, his job. He's three. Make that a four. Knight Rider. 
What in God's name was that? He held down his position so very well. And even though there were three players in front of him towards A main, nobody took him out. Look at this. This smoke helped him. This is so unfortunate because I think if this smoke wasn't there, Bullseye would have watched that angle. He would have taken care of that angle. And Knight Rider would not have any sort of advantage. Look at this Knight Rider spraying down one head after the other. And perfect, just perfect placement of Crosshair, perfect placement of himself as a position, uh, as a player who's in a good position. And on top of that, that smoke which Cactus gave it for him was just, Get you know, out of my way. I, I don't know how I, I helped him put it, but I'll this guy is just crazy, Knight Rider. And Scar God, his teammate, is just as good. Make that a third. Knight Rider still putting up numbers. And he wants more. He's running in. He knows Cactus has his knife out, but he doesn't even care. And Scar God gets a third as both of these players who've been together for quite a while put up match point match for their point. team and aggressive. I hate to say it, but I think this just might be the end. Yeah, I don't know what the side of Team Delta are going to do to try and pull up Miracle here. It's just really difficult. You saw what happened in the last round, the coordination from the side of Team Delta. It's too stretched far in comparison to the other side. The way that the side of Team Bravo are playing, they're playing together as a squad, they're playing together as a complete cohesive unit, shutting down their opposition piece by piece together instead of going in for individual fights. And they only go for individual fights when, when their opponents are on an eco. But as soon as the gun rides are starting to roll around, it is the side of Team Delta switching up their you strategy. It's, sorry, it's the side of Team Bravo switching up their strategy immediately to get a better hold here. And now it is going to be Killjoy Lockdown being placed. Hinderflix going in for a little bit of an aggressive push to try and break it out. And the attack of Killjoy Lockdown was broken by Hoax. Like, he just knows, man. What do you do? It's a breach. And if he is able to kill your Lockdown with the Aftershock, that's one ability for an ultimate. A $150 ability to take down an um, ultimate that costs how many points? Seven points, you know. Yeah, now, yeah, I know. the side of Team Delta, they have absolutely nothing to do. How do they enter into the side? Yes, they got one kill on the Hydra Flick, but they don't have any real estate to work with. And on the map of Split, it is a game of real estate. You want to fight it! It certainly is, and what? One thing that Knight Rider doesn't know that there's somebody there, Ooh. but he still gets the kill. Bullseye goes in with it, and he gets walled off by his own teammate. I think he wanted to go back, but now he's in uncharted waters, and he might just get paid for it. Give there's another kill, Knight Rider, and his planted. knives are doing work. I'm in a 3v2. Knight Rider. He's going towards mid to come from the backstab. And Rio's done his job of finding another kill. And although there's going to be the Sage going down, there's still two players who are good enough to clutch this out on both sides. It's a oh, jet no. and kill joy combo. And it looks like the jet on one side is just raining supreme over the others. He gets one. And oh, there it is. It it work. It's the end. It is the side of Team Bravo to get split under their belt. And they have done a pretty good job of getting it down. Hydra Flick did give away an early kill, but Knight Rider made sure that whatever he does was going to be a successful maneuver. I, I really didn't expect that this last bit right here. Knight Rider, I mean, Edit, did not even bother checking his backstab, right? I think he should have heard Knight Rider trying to just, you know, rotate and come out. But I think maybe he thought it was a fake or he just got the better of timing because he thought somebody's coming on the side, so I think I should just focus over there rather than looking at my flank. And that's what he did. And unfortunately, his flank got completely covered by the opponent. And we're just gonna have a look at the match highlights to see how exactly this 13 to six victory from the side of Team Bravo was orchestrated more so by the duelists on this side, which I believe Knight Rider has done a great job of 23 kills. And this guy's yet again at the top of the board Scar God following up, Hydra Flick, a pretty quiet game from him, although he was playing on the race, but Knight Rider and Scar God, the two F1 players, have been just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, they've been an absolute dominant force throughout this entire All-Stars event here in Universe, and they're just not going to be stopping, not just yet, especially from the side of Knight Rider, man. The amount of times he's been clutching out rounds, getting 4Ks right, left, and center, it's just absolutely incredible, but at the same time, you have to give props towards the side of Team Delta as well. They were trying, they were able to pull up a lot of incredible plays from their side, but I personally do believe that the lack of the initiator kind of caught up to them when it came down to their own attacking side. I kept on telling you, their attacking side is going to be very difficult. They're not going to be able to break into the sides as easily because they have a double sentinel based composition, and when you have a double sentinel basis, 
you don't have any way of trying to get information of what's happening inside of the site how many people are holding there who's holding there what is holding there you need to rely on your opponents to use their own utility to try and give you a hint of how you should execute onto that different sideline and Knight Rider, he was just running circles all around the map. That's why I kept on seeing on split, you need to gain some real estate, have some control over towards A main, have control over men, have control over A B, B, uh, B main as well. All of these angles need to be covered. Someone needs to be watching them. Otherwise, your opponents are just going to run circles around you. And in this situation, Knight Rider did that every single time. And the way he was able to use his operator as well to get a lot of the advantages early on for the side of Team Delta, sorry, for the side of Team Bravo, I mean. They're supposed to show that I don't know what's going to happen on the map of Haven if split. The whole map of Delta was this rough. Things could just end badly for them and we could just be looking at a 2-0 in my eyes at this universe. Yeah, I mean, I told it earlier and I'm going to tell it again. It is the, it is the team that takes you know the first map and uh, they're gonna have the momentum in their hands and i think they might just take this 2-0 and i think bravo might just do that right because we see bravo they've defeated them 13 to 6 which is a scoreline that well we haven't seen till now it's uh a lot better than uh, what they performed yesterday against a team that was really competitive against team alpha you know team uh Charlie, and it's it's been quite a bit of a showcase of skill from their side. And it looks like they might just take this all the way. We are going to Haven, so there's going to be yep. a change in composition. There's going to be a change in a lot of things. There's going to be a change in uh, uh, maybe even player forms. You never know who's going to wake up now. Maybe, you know, Team Delta have a sudden rise in form. But we're going to have to wait and see all of that, as in we're going to come back in a couple of minutes to see how exactly all of it is going to turn out, whether Team Bravo are going to take this 2-0, or are we going to see Ascent come up? We're going to be back in just a few minutes to find that out, ladies and gentlemen. So don't go anywhere, as a TC got an All-Stars event powered by W Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant is going to be back in just a few.
Hey, South Asia Valorant players, I'm Sean Garris. It's Kusta. And Michael from Genji Valorant here with some really exciting news. We have teamed up with LG Ultra Gear and the Esports Club for Season 2 of The Gauntlet. The winner of TEC Gauntlet Season 2 will receive an exclusive one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with our Valorant team to help her identify areas of improvement in their game to prepare for a higher level of gameplay. In addition to that, we're going to be reacting to some of the top plays throughout this competition. Guys, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so make sure you don't miss out on this. Good luck to everyone competing from everyone here at Gen.G Valorant. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the LGL3 TC Gauntlet All Stars event powered by W Black and AMD Ryzen Radiant app. We are back now, ladies and gentlemen, after a very intense game number one, something that we really did not expect. Yes, it was a really close showing when it came down to the first initial stages. And then it was a landslide going down in the favor of the side of Team Bravo. They finished it off on a 13 and 6 score line. So let's head on up over to the map video screen and see what the scores were. And yeah, Team Bravo finishing on a 13 and 6. I kind of called it Universe because the double sentinel based composition is really weak on the attacking side, especially when opponents have a breach to hold you off on multiple different avenues when you want to start an attack. If you don't have your own initiator, it can break down in a matter of seconds. And on Haven, this is the last chance that the side of Team Delta have to try and bring something back here. But on Team Bravo's home map, I don't think that's going to happen that easily. Yeah, we're going to see. have to wait and see how exactly it's going to happen. Team Delta, they have to make a stand because Team Bravo have got a pretty strong momentum going on for them right now. You can see the Reyna has been chosen in. The Jet has been chosen in. We've got the Astra and the Sova as well. It is literally the same lineup except for the Sentinel, which is Killjoy on one end and Cypher on the other. So... I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make, except for the one fact that I think the Jet is going to be a little bit of a, uh, you know, they're going to have a little problem if they want to dash in. They got a tripwire in between uh, playing against uh, Bravo. But yeah, Delta, they need to make a call of, uh, you know, dominance and they need to make it right now because if they don't, then it's definitely going to hurt them. Uh, and, you know, they're going to just lose this out because it's, it's a one-time thing now. We just played uh, two matches yesterday. 
and they played one each and now they're gonna play this one which is for all of it right it's all the stakes are down over here you have everything to play for it's a fifty thousand dollar fifty thousand sorry fifty thousand rupees price pool uh <laughs> oh, slip God. a tongue over there yeah if it'll fifty thousand rupees and uh, yeah it, it's it's a lot right and all these players Maybe. they've come together along with content creators as well so it is definitely quite a bit to play for really hope team delta have you know put up some sort of uh, tactical strategy to get this going oh no knight rider he went in for that kill they knew that he would come in and he's got him either deleted and real blows bullseye's head right out of the air as uh side of bravo they gave a little bit of scare to themselves but rio just gives it back to delta now they're immediately rotating they've left cactus alone over there to hear out for these rotational sands but what he doesn't know is that there's players coming in from short and he might just get spotted out over here he oh, does no. and he gets his poor head taken cactus. out poor guy indeed and now they don't know where to go look at this they've got smokes over here covering up as in and robo calls it out for his teammate and they're just completely Spice sandwiched down, man. it's like it's like when you go to a subway and you know you got bread above you got bread below and that was right now team bravo and delta are just a ham that they're waiting to consume yeah dude like when you consider subway though they kind of slap everything together all at once and that's exactly what team bravo are doing they're not going easy on any of them they have control over the entire map they're just walking into sidelines 30 seconds left and hey if they're able to find that that's their wish they're gonna be the ones to go in for the wins here but he just walks past camera that's gonna hurt him it's gonna be good for a second but against oh, it's gonna be quite boy. difficult it's a one versus one situation that was four that was versus two the camera placement was not perfect from the side of Holmes and Holmes I personally do believe that he got to his teammates kill but it's still very much possible to work with Robo TM only has a share of 47 HP while when you consider the side of Scargot he has 50 HP he's in one shot range if he gets shot once he's dead oh no Scargot oh. he just spams the bullets and Scar gets hit in the body as he's trying to run on away Robo got scared, but hey, it's a sheriff. It's a one shot to the body. If Robo had a ghost, though, I personally do believe that Scar would have won that round. I don't know how in the world did Bravo lose this round because this was their round and it was all, you know, it was all in their favor. I really didn't expect them to lose this one. 4 we 2 and then yeah, HBS comes out of nowhere and finds, you know, two kills. And then they just fell apart and Robo to clutch it out. And a great area. round from them, indeed, to clutch it up in the very end. Now, there is a force by of swords. There's two marshals in play, one of which is in Knight, Rider hand, Knight Rider's hands. Other one in Hydra's hands. And Knight Rider's going to make the first one work. Cactus finds him back, though. And he's looking for another. He knows Rio's around the corner. He saw him slam down upon him. And Scargod goes down trying to hold on short. Cactus makes sure that Rio does I'm not do anything vision. a little bit more cheeky. As HV is holding down towards mid, he has tagged down Hydra Flick a little bit. Hydra still lingering around thinking that somebody might just pop out of that door, but nobody's going to. Because the plan is going down towards A. And as soon as this goes down, there's going to be a little bit of a uh, push coming in, which Cactus is already doing as Ooh. I speak. But that shorty, Oops. that range could be different. Oh, 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 no, the up. timing. The timing on that is so unfortunate. One enemy remaining. Cactus comes to help out his teammate HVS, takes down Hydra, and there's going to be no more rain action. But Oaks, if you had lingered for literally half a second more, you would have probably gotten that kill. Hydra would have been alive this time. Gets a little bit taggy, knows he can't take that fight anymore. Even at that range, he's really low to take it. But HVA swings out, takes his head right in the midair. And he's going to pick up that shorty. As Team Delta put up two on the board. And they've had a pretty strong start. Dude, I thought that Hoax actually saw his arm poking out over there. But I personally do believe that Hoax was actually looking at his mini map. Hoax looked at his mini map. He walked away. Both Cactus and David were like, nah. We're not doing this. We are buddies. We're just going to slowly walk away from one another. That's not going to happen. And that happened at the very end as well. Hulk could have walked up a little bit forward and then killed Cactus. But Hulk was like, nah, I'm not going to kill him. I'm going to die to somebody else or I'm going to kill somebody else in the process. 
in a way, a little bit of equal damage being done, but not as favorable. But now with the fire on it, they there should be something that they can do here. Hydra Flick's gonna be going for one kill. He's immediately gonna run on away, get into a better position. But Night Rider's still alive. He wants to go in for a couple of kills. He's gonna be able to find one. He's looking for one more, but gets spanned out straight through the smoke. One person is inside of Psychic. He's gonna run Fire the corner, but Scar got too quick, especially with the better weapon that he has. It's Hydro Flick's gonna be good for one kill. Last player remaining is gonna be Robo. Gonna be good for one kill, but after that, I don't think that's good. Yeah, pretty much done and dusted, and uh, yeah, Team Bravo immediately respond back, and they've had, you know, a little bit of ground taken away from them, but it looks like they want to take it back as soon as possible. The thing about Team Bravo, though, Aggressive, is that, you know, I, I like that these guys, they don't have a problem even if they lose rounds, because they know, you know, they've got that composure in them, which I really admire, because... They don't care, even if they've lost out the half. Even if they go down 75, 8 to 4. They still are like, you know what, guys? It's okay. We're going to get back into this. We're going to do it right. And that's how they look like at least, even if that's not what it's going to be said. Because they've had the dominance pretty much throughout. And they want to do it again. Knight Rider, he's going in aggressively. Even though he saw the operator shots coming on through. Because he's got a judge. And in this position, he's going to be the most dangerous player on this map right now. If they choose to come here. Which at the moment doesn't look like it because Delta seems like they might just hit B, but Hydroflix says no as he takes down Bullseye. HVH to return the favor, and uh, it's an even trading situation right now for both of these teams. 4v4, a kill to ultimate available to which the counter from Team Bravo is also available in the form of Hunter's Fury. They're heading in towards Garage. Scar got throws down the gravity wall. He hears bullets. He does not want to peek this out. He knows he's got a lot of players. Rio actually takes out HPS. Hoax takes out another Robo TM and Cactus to trade back. And now in a 2v2, there is no counter. And there could be a kill to ultimate coming in from Robo. But he's going to go straight for the plan first. Knight Rider on the backstab. He's got a judge. And in that range, it's going to be of no use. As the oh, no. ultimate goes down and Cactus, he gets taken out. The judge should be working, but it's actually... The Phantom being picked up by him, and there's nothing Robo can do about that. He's got two players just jumping on about him, and they need to defuse this spike. And there's round number two coming in from Team Bravo. That was a very expensive round from Delta as well. They bought an operator in the last round of the universe, so now that's a free operator for the defenders. They didn't have to invest a single penny for that. This has just gotten very very difficult for delta to come back from especially if they're not able to shut down night rider as fast as they possibly can he has the money he's going to be able to buy up for his teammates as well and slowly but surely the economy is going to be building hydra a little bit of hyping from his end they should be taking a pause right here to fix that technical difficulty but as we are going to be breaking down the game just a little bit more let's talk more about what's happening towards the side of the attackers why are they faltering so much? And I primarily do think that they're not really able to establish a lot of control all across the map. For example, you already see, they tried to establish a little bit of control on towards the side of A. But they immediately faltered and they just went back as soon as the smoke came on down through on the A main entrance. You should not be doing that. You have a solo on your arsenal. You can invest your drone, drone there because normally what do you use the drone for? You primarily use it to clear out sidelines of garage or you use it on A shore. That's the true primary uses of the drone on the map of Haven. Yes, you can use it on B. Yes, you can use it somewhere else, but that's not as feasible as the other two options. You could have invested that drone. You possibly could have gotten a kill on an over-aggressive Knight Rider who was just walking up the side of a short. These are the type of small things that the side of Team Delta need to employ to try and get this win against the side of Team Bravo. And they need to figure that out right here and right now. Otherwise, I personally do believe that the rounds are going to be going out of their hands as soon as this eco round is over. Because Knight Rider on the Operator, he's going to be really difficult to take down, especially on his whole map of Haven. Yeah, he's been a menace to every single team on Haven. And it looks like he's going to be a little more. Misses the shot, though. Second one, definitely not going to be missing that. As now an eco struck team, Delta, are running into the crosshairs of... Bravo players more so into Knight Rider's crosshair, and he's just damaging them with that dragon of an operator. As Hoax is coming on the backstab as well, he's cleared out the attacking side spawn. 
And Robo looking towards Garage. That tripwire not gonna allow him to do anything, but Edit might just find a kill over here. No, he's not going to. Rio finds it better of him. And now Robo TM left all alone in a 1v5 with nothing but a sheriff. His turret has been taken down as well. Spotted out by the camera, sprayed down by Scar God. Round number three and the lead back in the favor of Team Bravo. Unexpected that was gonna happen. We already knew that Team Bravo were gonna be the ones to get that win because, hey, they were the ones who had the operator, they had the bit of ice. No harm, no foul. Just keep on moving it down the court. But now, when the Byron is on the cards, or the side of Team Delta, I expect them to perform a lot for them. They need to take a sweat here, Universe, and you know why. This is not only a win to get another round on the board and send yourselves to even Stevens. This is also a win to break the momentum and the cash flow that the side of Team Delta, Team Bravo have actually built for themselves. I think they're going in a little bit aggressive. He's is gonna get caught out, but Night Rider, he misses out on a shot and wants to go in for a reswing. The reswing is gonna cost him with Robo TM being the one to take him on down out. That's the operator already off the cards, and the round has started beautifully for the side of Team Delta, but over aggression on towards that B side. They need to rotate, but they're trying to over aggress. They're gonna pay for it. But Hulk, he just walks himself down forward onto the mid angle. And it's gonna be the one to take him on out. And with that, it's a 3 versus 3 situation. The Hunter Street is available for Edit to work with as well. They can easily play this for a post plan, but hey, Scar God, he's got their phone numbers and he's slowly but surely walking up to call them up. Oh no, he's Edit. Got somebody. He's got somebody covering well, up and he throws in that cosmic device so that he can cover off the, that area. Now he needs to worry about this. He sees Boom. and what? hears Bullseye. And Hydroflick takes out Robo TM. And it's the last man left. 1880, but doesn't matter. He's going in for the Hunter's Fury. He takes the one. He gets both of them. Edit. You absolute madman. How did this both of them line up? That was not supposed to happen. They could have just gone separate directions. But Hydra. Oh, that's got to hurt, man. That's just got to hurt a lot. He did not expect him to be here either. Scar God did not think that Edit would be around this corner, but look at them. They lined up, and that's just... I mean, they were not exactly lined up, but with the Hunter's Fury, with the range that it has as its circumference, it's more than enough to take out two, three players at a time if needed. And that's exactly what Edit did. And now they've got it back to level score. It's 3-3. Three three. And Hoax has got information that there are players towards C-Long. Hydra pushes up towards mid. Brace down a couple of bullets. He eats a little in the behind as well. Oh no! For Bullseye! Hoax yeah. taking care of Seaside. Takes down one. That Whipper absolutely perfect. Cactus. He's gonna go oh, down no. to Hydra. Another one for Hydra. Spike He's down. gonna heal himself See, last completely. Player it doesn't matter that he has to use both of his orbs. As Looks Night Runner like is gonna do strong. cleanup duty. And it is the janitor in place over here, ladies and gentlemen. It's just Team Delta, they had control. I feel like they could have gotten this round, but Cactus had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Yeah. Hydra Flick came in at the right time, and there was nothing they could do about it. I mean, as much as they could have tried, it was just it was just not going to be enough. The hold from Oaks was brilliant. His trip wires were just perfect. And that one death dash that was denied was all it took for the round to crumble down upon the faces of Team Delta. Yeah, that was a harsh Get round and a half way. right there, Universe, because they kind of got something for themselves, but yeah, a little bit too much of an over-aggressive play from their side. They should have just waited. They need to bait out utility. They need to try more information before they go in for an execution of their own. The fact is, they're not doing that. It's going to hurt them, but edit! Poor old edit gets oh, caught out. Yeah, Nightrider hey. should be good for one more kill, but he needs to dip. Nightrider, this is dangerous! What are you were doing? It's not legal! One enemy three players no one with an operator on an equal round with three guys pushing him and he just slaps the guy Spiky. in the face with a classic as well. How is that guy allowed to be alive for so long? Huh? How? How? Someone needs, to, someone needs to get him out of this server already. Let me think of the court as well because this guy is pulling off plays that he should not be making. And he's so confident, man. Tell me what opera that is that confident. Even, doesn't matter if it's unique around. Doesn't matter if it's a buy around. You know that Knight Rider, he's always doing stuff like that. He most certainly is. And Bravo, yet Stand again, a 5-3 to three lead. Some, some, something similar to what it was last time around. But this is where Delta actually got a hang on them. And they put up 5-4. to four. 
Rio spotted out one player. He does not know if there's another, but he does not want to take the chance of peeking out and give up his life in case there is. Hydra. Now this time he's with the operator, waiting a short. He just needs to fire it. He actually fires it between the legs of HVN. You should run. Oh, that is gonna be a little unfortunate. And Scargod is just spamming down to that wooden piece of whatever that is. I'll run away. That's not gonna work. He's probably gonna get detained. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh, oh no. It doesn't matter. Rio, he's still got one player. Cactus takes him down as a return. Two players have been detained. We're gonna be coming back into life in just a couple of seconds as Hoax. He's trying to find somebody. He hears them under heaven. He knows somebody's planning as well, but he does not need to jump down. Good thing he's not. Scar God was uh, I don't the think operator. That's okay. <laughs> okay, Scar God. I don't that, think that's like, no, this is my operator. I'm not giving it to anyone. It's okay though, it's alright. It, Hydra Flick, I think he's feeling confident with it, but HVS is being a little bit more confident. Takes down Hoax. Now it's a 3v4, 3v3, where Cactus is raining up on top. The Empress was not for him more so than it did for Hydra Flick. Scar God, has, although he takes him down, he knows he's got a save. And he runs all the way towards C. And that's round number four for Delta. And this is exactly the track path that was in the previous map aggressive it was five to three it became five to four and yet again it's five to four it looks like we might just see another seven to five half if uh, you know all things go right so yeah team bravo although they've lost this round they're not gonna feel too bad about it because they're still on track they still have money they still have a lot of uh, utility to work out with so no harm no foul I would personally say that the attacking side is a little bit more stronger for the side of Team Delta, primarily because they do have the Killjoy on their favorite. Killjoy is much more of an aggressive sentinel. You can play a lot more dynamically with her, while with Cypher, you need to play more lurk heavy. And in this situation, I guess them losing out on the attacking, uh, defensive side, sorry, is not that surprising when you especially consider Haven being a much more attacker favorite map in general so it's a kind of good thing one. but at the same time it's a bad thing Holy <laughs> does get spotted out at poor old folks you can't go in for plays like that oh if his leg got spotted out in that situation that's gonna be one kill but i just trying to go in for a couple of his own plays rio's gonna be good for one kill with the hunter's fury but edit on the back is gonna be the one to shut down nine and scar gonna be able to take down eight and scar gonna be able to take down another one onto cactus and with that it's already done and dusted robo tm last player remaining once again Honestly, universe, I kind of feel bad for him, man. Always the killjoy, always the last one alive. And this time around, he's also gonna be the one just being the one to send, to be sent into his own grave. Six and four of the scorecards here. Possibly going on a seven and four as well, because looking at the money, the side of Team Delta, they're very poor. Ooh, yeah, it's uh. It's a little bit of a uh, worrying matter right now. This is a round where they're gonna have to try to play with pistols. They have been forced into it. There is a marshal in the hands of HVS, but I don't think this is gonna be working out against the operator that Knight Rider is holding. And he's picking out towards A main. Hydro Flakes pushing up towards C. HVS has an idea about it, so he goes back a little. Cactus holding down this angle across the smoke. If, I, Nitra, if Knight Rider finds a jump on him, it's gonna be great, but Hydra Flick is the one who's gonna be aggressing. Ooh. Although he takes down one, he's given away a weapon now. That's a glimmer of hope they can work with. Scar God now left to defend the seaside all by himself. Hoax is towards Garage, but I don't think how long that's gonna work out for him. Right now, it's gonna be Knight Rider though, who's making things work. As now in a 3v4, Knight Rider's looking to make it 2v4. He will make oh, it 2v4. Even on a yeah, HBS, there's nothing you can do about it. Bullseye. Player standing. He gets a bullet right in the head. That's an actual That's bullseye right there. Yeah, bullseye indeed. Edit. Across B. Gonna Ooh. take down Rio, actually. Okay, that's a fair amount of damage done. He's looking for more. Knight Rider could take him down. No, edit. He's gonna go down. Knight Rider gets a third of the round for himself. Gets back his operator in his hands. Picks Last up a sheriff as well. Completely switch. maxed out in terms of weapons. As it is the last run of the half, ladies and gentlemen. And a 7-4 to four score line could be 7-5 potentially. We're going to have to just wait and find out. Because that's exactly what happened in the last ha last map. If it happens again, who's not to say we can't see another deja vu coming up, hey? Especially when you consider this being the home map of Team Bravo. They have the strats. They're much more comfortable here. And especially on their attacking side. They are a team 
that can perform really well. And I personally do believe that they have their cable strategy sound a lot more in comparison to any other map. They're playing it so disciplined and it's actually it. working. They're going in for pushes Go according run. to what avenues they want to control. They're not over aggressive, but they are pushing to a certain extent. And edit once again, man. Poor old Hoax. He's constantly going on down towards that seaside, and he is the one Cutting to die division. out every single time here as well. Shots are gonna be good though. HP has to win around the corner. He is gonna be good for one. But now they need to back on off because this is not an advantage that they have on their side. Nitro is going to get spotted out as well because of the recon bolt. And now it's a wraparound rotation. They don't need to stay here. They can easily go down over towards the seas. I take control of that because Scar God, he's at only 36 HP. He has right almost there. nothing to work with. But at the same time, if he just gets one kill here, just one, that's going to be all that he needs for Knife Rider and Absolute Menace. Miss. He's trying to survive, maybe with an operator, he's gonna be able to shut down one more. Hey, he has to swing around the corner, Bullseye's gonna be good for one, one on his back, one on his front. Knife Rider, come on, one no on way. the shot! He's gonna get be able out to of get here. it! He's probably gonna be able to survive as well, 12 HP! He gets out of it alive! Knife Rider! Somebody he just did not this. do that! Rio dead as well! Oh no, Rio's still- 30 seconds left. Last player standing. They should've gotten that kill, and now it is at 17 HP and making it work. Two low HP targets, Rio can actually bring it on back. Scar got right around the corner, he should be jiggling it. He should be swinging it. He doesn't get- Oh! Scar got gonna be able to get the clutch. All right, I- What just happened? Sides. I am going to uh, file a report for illegal measures of staying alive when you're supposed to be dead against Knight Rider. I should probably play that some stars in the is not game. supposed to happen. That is not supposed to happen. I, I don't know how he did it. I don't know what he did, but whatever he did, this guy needs to be kicked into a Valorant jail of sorts for illegal stuff happening without even trying because how the hell did he survive there? He even got a kill on the back of it. Completely crazy, Knight Rider. What are you made of, dude? My God. Knight Rider for a reason. This guy. I don't know what he's special. up to. Special is the least. Oh wait, did he think somebody? No, he didn't. I thought he think somebody mid the dash bullseye, but he didn't. Knight Rider. He almost finds a kill over there. He could have sprayed him down. He's holding the bow and arrow in his hands. Edit. Oh, he's playing around that smoke. Tucked himself into that corner. Nobody has an idea that he's here. And if they've given the sound cue of running away, they could just ignore Knight Rider over here, but they, he still has a player to take care of, and that's Edit. Sitting in that corner behind him. HVS has to worry about his side. That is C. Throws down his utility, uses a bit of it. Now he's got only one star left. Got two players over there along with the support. And Rio throws in that... Recon for a safety measure to just let them know or believe that they're not coming to where they are coming towards C and not towards oh, A. But the sound cues. Oh, oh, Night Rider oh, takes on sleep. Edit. That's just unfortunate. Edit. Only one man standing between the side of Bravo That's and this it. A side is taken out. And now in the 5v4, this retake looks really, really difficult. Yeah, dude, and it just fell asleep. He didn't expect that to happen. Hydra Flick's gonna be good for one kill. Probably gonna heal himself back up to full. A couple of pop shots being taken, but Cactus is still alive. Hydra Flick's gonna be good for a second one. Robo's just dead. around the corner. He gets spammed out as well. And poor old Cactus, what do you do here? It's Kark. Okay. Dude, just classic right click the guy in the forehead while he was jumping it up and down. Yes. That, that's exactly how you play this game, ladies and gentlemen. Very when there's balance. a player on heaven. When there's a player on heaven, you jump up and down and you keep right clicking until they're dead. Even if you don't see them. Just jump up and down. Just click heads, right click. Just that's it. That's all. That, that's, that's how you play that, that, that's how that's how you play this game. That's how you play this game. There is no I other way. I can feel the salt. I can feel the salt on universe's side. Did this did the same thing happen to you in a ranked game though? No. Yeah, I can see. I can hear that from the No, I can but hear this that has from... happened before. HVS pushes up with the rest of his team. And oh. it looks like it's going to be handled as Night Runner and Rio are going to take out every single player. Skargod adds onto this as well. And this mid push is completely denied. And Skargod yes, just. Okay, he's. Mind. I don't know how those kills happen. And wow, it's just. I I'm pretty sure that Bullseye got annoyed with that tripwire. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, Who plays the trip there? But they, they expected it. They knew for a fact that we're going to do a mid push. It feels like the side of Team Bravo, they know all of the strategies being employed by Team Delta. 
more or less they pretty much do now we're gonna have to see how exactly this uh, match is gonna end up because we see a 10 to 4 scoreline but it's not gonna be uh, gonna be ending up the same i believe at least on the latter half i really hope that they give a little more of a fight over here i just like going in for this aggressive garage push i just get caught off guard whale he still managed to take down Robo, even though he was concentrating on taking down that alarm bot. <laughs> and Hydra, <laughs> he's put himself and his team, he's put his team in a position where they can take the seaside control, and they have. And now, 11 to 4 scoreline looking inevitable at this point, even though there's a bonus, but the retake is very, very possible. Bullseye gets taken out, comes for the backstab, gives Knight Rider a weapon of his choice. Gives him a little bit more of an advantage one enemy as remaining. they're going down one by one. There's nothing Team Delta can do about it. Bravo are just too good on their feet right now. And they're dominating, decimating, and absolutely devastating right now. They're just taking down everything that they can from the side of Team Delta. And they are saying, this is it, boys. The game's over. We're going to take over. And this is going to be the end of it. Because this round, they win this, it's pretty much done and dusted, at least for in my book. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to win this out that easily. Positions are good, positions are strong. They're just able to do so much here that the other side, what do they do? They're getting tormented eats by these, and they're getting taken oh. out before they can even breathe. Just look at this! Scargot swings around the corner, does a signature Scar Peak, and Locking sends Bullseye to a straight by a double thing to the forehead. Straight to the wall, mind you! And now Scargod gets a true team kill. He's just gonna keep on going. HBS finally shuts down the Medicine on Scargod, but now Hydra Blake in his turn. Being a small criminal, he's gonna be good for one. Cactus is right around the corner. Who's gonna swing at it? It's gonna be Cactus being able to get the first initial kill. HBS is still heavy team with his buddy. This is a two versus two situation, but they're very low on HP. Look at the positions here. Knight Rider's in the best one possible. If he's holding down from the side of C long, HBS is not gonna be expecting this. But Cactus just goes for a wraparound play. If he just wants to go in for a wraparound, it could work. This will be a trade here. I personally do believe this should be a trade. There is no way Knight Rider gets away with all of this if he does, man. I'm pretty sure I need to go to the office with you and file a report as well. But hey, they're not going to be going towards the angle of Knight Rider. They're actually heading on down over to the side of Garage. Knight Rider understand this with no one peeking here. They are going to go into Garage. Hope it's going to be good for one. Yeah, sprays are going to be coming as well. Hoax and Knight Rider with a double peek are going to be everything that they need to shut it all no down. 12 and 4 on the scorecards. Match and hey, point. match point, just as the announcer lady said here. You know, just, are we going to be ending things off and crowning champions for the All-Stars event? Or will there be a second win from the side of Team Delta? We're gonna have to wait and see because a, a comeback at this point looks really unlikely aggressive and you know I really don't believe that Delta are gonna be able to make even a bit of a comeback maybe another round maybe two maybe three nothing way. more 12 to 4 and look at this Hydroflix already found the first kill Knight Rider although he eats a bit of damage He's still going in for this. He wants the kills and he's not gonna get it. He goes down, but it's gonna be Scargot to trade off immediately in his favor. As this looks like it's done and dusted. The plan is gonna go down from Hoax's hands. As a 3v4 retake has come in, it's pretty much all done because this uh, cosmic divide is not even gonna allow them to come in front. They've even spotted out where this uh, backstab is coming from. Hydra <laughs> takes him out, Cactus has gone down. And this is Team Bravo winning out TEC Starland All Stars in a manner that we did not expect today. Rio shuts down the last player, and that's that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we have. It's just what a play by Team Bravo. Yesterday they had such a difficult fight against Team Alpha, and today they just turned up their game so much that they won the first map 13 to six, and second one 13 to four, and dominance all over the place indeed what what a game an absolutely insane one as well they get the win they're the champions the year ladies and gentlemen and they deserve it the way that they were able to win this it was just so quick and so precise as well they had nothing to worry about they had it all under wraps like dude just imagine this universe hoax put a tripwire on the mid window expecting a push from them he expected an eco rush on mid that's how prepared they were. Everyone was waiting outside of mid. The calls were all there. Haven was a map made for them. 
And in a way, we already see why Team Bravo, they wanted to go in for that pick for the second map. That's why SMAP number one was such a crucial win for Delta, but they were just not able to find that whatsoever. That's what hurt them the most here. They were just not able to get any of it done. And in a way, Team Bravo, they just stole away the victory out of absolutely nowhere. And I don't know, Universe, it feels like it could have gone just a little bit better because... Personally, let's head on down over towards the Bash highlights so we can do a little bit more of an in-depth breakdown and give you guys a visual representation of what really went wrong for the side of Team Delta. And I have to start with map control. Yes, they had map control. They were able to do a lot, but they only had control on one specific side of the map. What about the other side? Like, you have control of A long. Where's the A short control? You're so deep into A long that you have nothing to watch A short. If a player walks in from there, you have nothing to do. You have no information to work with. And then you're going to be in a pretty sticky situation. Team Delta, they perform really well when it comes down to Pistron. But what really goes wrong on their buy rounds here? They're not playing for trades. They're not playing in close proximity to one another. The chemistry was just not as good as the side of Team Bravo simply in my eyes. And that's one of the prime reasons why they lost here. It's not because of strategy, it's not because of aim, but just the chemistry between the team's teammates, sorry, just did not work. I mean, you wouldn't really expect it to be because this is a team yeah. that is formed, you know, uh, just uh, around uh, just a little bit of time. They've not played together really, but still, it is players who've played with a lot of randoms in, you know, ranked games and whenever they play the high tier games. And it's okay. Sometimes it works out, sometimes yeah. it doesn't. So it, you know, it's, it's all right. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. That's about it. Chemistry is something that you develop a across time. And they didn't have much of it. But still, they put up a performance that, you know, give a little bit of a, uh, a ovation for. Not, uh, because yesterday they did show that they have what it takes to be the top contenders. And moments like these, uh, you know, are what make us believe that, you know what, they actually do have what it takes to, you know, take down Bravo or take down any other team that comes their way. But unfortunately... Team Bravo were just a little too good. Every single way they played was just perfect. Everybody performed to the best. Everybody had, you know, in control. They were in control themselves. They were in control for their team. They just went around every single place. They ran riot. They just put up, uh, you know, a defensive line when it was required. They went aggressive when they had to. And it was just perfect. Uh, Bravo were just really, really good. And Delta just fell short, unfortunately. And, well, they are going to be the second place uh, people, second place team over here in the All-Stars event as we are going to see Bravo turn out and come on top as the TEC Gundam All-Stars champion. Honestly, Team Bravo, they deserve it. They fought through thick and thin. Yes, their match number one opening day was a lot more difficult, I would say. But at the same time, they had to sweat here as well. Team Delta, they had the momentum at the very beginning, but they were just not able to hold it. And remember what I was saying previously, that Team Delta, they have a lot of players that rely on momentum, bullseye, then it's Cactus. If you let them have a really good start right off the get-go, they're going to be a team that mows you down piece by piece, but that's just not what's going to happen here if you don't give them the momentum. And I like the fact that inside of Team Bravo, they were able to control them so beautifully here as well but hey ladies and gentlemen that's all that we have for you for the all-stars event because we already crowned our champion this is only a two to a thing but hey ladies and gentlemen don't really worry about it because we got a lot more spicy stuff coming as well soon enough on 8 30 p.m because hey the tc gauntlet season two is going to be coming on back it's going to be heading on down over onto the playoffs as well and as we sign on off here we're going to be prepping everything up for that but as we are prepping up for that you should be prepping yourself up as well by checking out all the links down below in the description and getting yourself a couple of deals from our sponsors of WB black and of course amd horizon Rain. if you want a process if you want an ssd we got you covered check out all of the links down below and as you're down there as well, hit that like, hit the subscribe, and also hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss out on the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. The playoffs bracket is where everything's at. If you want to see who's going to be facing off against who in this high-intense octane action off the side of the TC Gauntlet Season 2, you don't want to miss any of that. But for now, it's going to be your boy Aggressive. You are my universe signing on off, and we're going to be back with you real shortly with the LG Ultra Gear, TC Gauntlet, All-Stars event w, uh, powered by W Black and AMD Ryzen Radio. Submit.